This is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel. Got a few things to show you guys here. This is called an MMC. They're hooked in series. That's about 7,500 to 10,000 kV. They're pulse rated. They can have 200 amps run through them. They're not the optimal ones. I got these surplus. They're only rated at 150 to 200 volts a piece, so that's why I had to use so many. Cornell makes one that's rated at 2 kV, and they use them a lot for Tesla capacitors. That's the ones you want. They're a little hard to find sometimes. If somebody buys them, they buy them in a lot, and then they usually sell off the excess so they can get them for a lower price. If you find somebody like that, you can usually pick the good ones up for a couple bucks. Look on eBay, you can find a few of them here and there and get enough to do what you want to do with the QEG experiments. But this is going to do for now. I'm going to be testing this hybrid generator, which I have already got up to 100 volts. But my problem is that the capacitors I was using were microwave capacitors. They have a built-in 10 mega ohm resistor. I think it was hindering my work. This is not, there is no resistance in this. I'll have to set up a bleed for it so I can work on it. Now this capacitor is rated at 2,200 volts, okay? So, and the, the important factor here is that there are no PCBs in this capacitor. If you get an older one, it's got PCBs, do not be cutting that thing open because it's toxic. Um, this just has oil in it and the plates, um, you can see it's just wrapped, okay? Now, if you open them up like this, you could use this. This is the resistor. Now I have another use for this resistor. I have a whole bunch of these microwave uh, capacitors. And um, my plan here is to just set up a test uh, bank that I can use these things uh, to run small tests. And then I can run the, the MMC on whatever I'm working on currently to tune, okay? Now, the, you might say, well, why in the hell would you want to <laughs> cut open a microwave capacitor? Well, um, this internal resistor is rated at uh, between, between 10 and 20 uh, mega ohms, okay? And that is what I'm after. Um, in this case, this one right here, I can show you is uh, there we go it's on a 20 mega ohm scale so we're looking at about 9.3 uh, mega ohms okay now what I'm gonna do with this is I've got a bunch of these things because I've been picking up microwaves that and using them in different experiments. Um, if you hook these in series, okay, you can build a probe that will let you read high voltage. And I'll, I'll go through the, when I've got this taken apart in another video here, I will show you how to make that probe. Now, if you're making a probe for DC, it's different than making a probe for an AC. You have to have this resistor, and you also have to have these little small as small as you can get them, capacitors, because of the high frequency, they're daisy chained and then they're connected across to absorb this high frequency. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in series, vacuum seal them and some oil, and then I can test my settings by using a multimeter on a lower scale. And, uh, you know, you have to calibrate this so you know what your offset is but you're just trying to ballpark where your voltage is going. And in this case, I don't want to blow up my meter and I want to make something that I can use quickly to run tests and I don't have to worry about frying an expensive piece of equipment. Uh, I can just use a cheap multimeter and use uh, these mega ohm resistors in series to give me a baseline to create a meter reading that is in the KV range because most of these meters 
only go up to a thousand volts. Uh, some AC, some of them don't even go to a thousand volts. So you need the ability to build this and you can find videos on how to do this. So if you don't want to wait for me to do my little video, what you're going to do is just search for how to build a high voltage probe for a multimeter and there are some YouTube videos on really well designed web pages with a lot of information on how to do it. Now I want to mention one other thing in the one of the original WITS videos on the QEG. They have a small bank of 12 and they, they look like these Cornell uh, capacitors which usually these pulse capacitors the way they're assembled is you can see this one right here, I took it apart. Um, this is wound with this, uh, with an insulator between these two sheets, and then the whole end is sealed on the wires on both sides. So instead of running from the edge all the way to the inside, like a normal capacitor would be, the, the volt, the amperage can just fly through this thing. There is no resistance, there is no induction to this type of pulse capacitor, which is what we want. We don't want this current flowing around in a circle and create in, inducing a current externally to the capacitors. That's going to mess your settings up. So what you want to do is you want a pulse capacitor. And the Cornell ones, I'll list in the description the part number. Geek Group has some really good videos on, on their arrays that they use on their large Tesla coils. Um, I'll link that one as well in the forum, if not in the YouTube video. And you can really get an idea of what you need to make this happen. So there you go, a little way on the cheap to solve this capacitor problem uh, that for testing these QEG hybrids. So this is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel signing out.